Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I now open hearing number 15 of the 187th period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, which, and the, this session is entitled Situation of Human Rights in Haiti in the Context of the Humanitarian and Citizen Security Crisis. And it was requested by Human Rights Office in Haiti, BDHH. My name is Margaret May McCauley, President of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. And I am um, joined in this platform by Commissioner Strado Vallon, who is the country rapporteur for Haiti, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, and Commissioner Carlos Bernal. And also present at this hearing are Executive Secretary Tanya Renault and a Deputy Executive Secretary for Monitoring, Maria Claudia Polito, and Special Rapporteur on Freedom um, on, for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca, and the Special Rapporteur for um, Economic, Social, Cultural, and, and Environmental Rights, Soledad Garcia Monos. Um, with that, um, I greet uh, both of uh, the um, representatives of civil society and the, <coughs> the delegation from the esteemed state of Haiti. Um, I would like to mention the distribution of time, which has been worked out by the Secretariat for this hearing. Civil society will have 20 minutes to make this um, opening submissions. The state will also have 20 minutes and the commission panel and, and staff will have 20 minutes. Then civil society is to have a further 12 minutes in reply and the state a further 12 minutes uh, for rejoinder. And the commission closes after this. I now give the floor to civil society. Civil society, who's speaking on behalf of civil society? Hello? Is there a problem? Who's going to make the opening statement on behalf of civil society? Mr. Woods can. Bonjour, est-ce que vous m'entendez? Mon nom est Woodken Eugène. En principe, nous sommes trois pour le BDHH à faire cette présentation. Et Bonjour. Que... Ok, d'accord, super. Voilà, c'est bon. Toutes nos excuses, on a un accès euh, malheureusement à l'énergie et à l'Internet extrêmement compliqué en ce moment. Et donc, euh, malheureusement, peut-être que le, le signal ne sera pas bon sur la continuité. On espère qu'on arrivera quand même à partager ce moment et à, à se comprendre. Vous nous entendez tous? Yes, please go on. OK. Je peux commencer? Oui. Cool. Yes, I said please go on. Très bien. Alors, euh, Jacques, okay. Haïti, euh, donc nous sommes réunis aujourd'hui euh, pour aborder la question de la situation des droits humains en Haïti dans le contexte euh, actuel de la crise humanitaire et, et de la sécurité publique. Haïti connaît une crise sociopolitique majeure caractérisée ces dernières années par une crise institutionnel au plus haut niveau de l'État, avec notamment la dislocation du Parlement depuis janvier 2020, l'absence de président de la République depuis l'assassinat de Jovenel Moïse en, ju en juillet 2021, et la situation de facto des autorités au sein des pouvoirs tant exécutifs que judiciaires. On ne peut plus parler de séparation des pouvoirs 
Un premier ministre intérimaire occupe non seulement les fonctions de chef du gouvernement, mais aussi de facto de président de la République, sans pourtant avoir obtenu la confiance du Parlement et sans plus aucun contrôle depuis. Plus aucune personne placée en responsabilité aujourd'hui n'est élue en Haïti. Et pratiquement plus aucun de ceux qui devaient être désignés par des élus ne sont installés en respectant le cadre légal et constitutionnel. Nous sommes forcés, après deux ans de gouvernance sans mandat, sans objectif, sans durée définie, sans perspective claire d'élection, de se demander si nous pouvons encore parler de démocratie. We can still talk about democracy here. This institutional framework it's deteriorating within the years. There has been an important speed up of the process after the massacre of La Saline in November of 2018 that happened within a climate of popular unrest of citizenship with, in face of the scandal of corruption with Petro Caribe. This happened on December 31st, on 2019, by uh, the uh, mandates given by your institution that have been ignored and have not been followed up on the land and institutionally. And the work and the confrontation that has happened under the commission has been just a joke. The state has, oh, this state has opened the way to impunity, which is out of control, which greets the no control of the public space by the state. There are armed gangs who control the territories. We speak of more of 75% of the capital city that is under control of not the police and there are voluntary homicides and other cases of massacres that have been happening, especially in the popular neighborhoods who where are, there are many inhabitants who have been displaced. A, the, in this weather or climate of generalized insecurity, there is lack of oil and other sources of energy. And There are natural catastrophes that had happened in these last three years that have contributed to a major crisis, human crisis in the country and in violation of the fundamental rights that should be protected by the human rights. And here we would like to place our accent, especially in the cases of violation of human rights. And I would like, first of all, to give the floor to Eugène Roquen, the attorney cooperator in human rights in Haiti, to make an intervention with that the uh, attacks to the physical integrity of a person. Thank you. Thank you, Madame. Now, here we have two categories of violation of human rights. A security et à l'intégrité physique de la personne. To the physical integrity of the person. And according to the Articles four and five of the American Convention of Human Rights. The state of Haiti does not protect anyone and cannot make respect the, those rights in the sense that it has a obligation to protect if in consideration of the insecurity that has been generalized, in consideration of the 
insecurity, general, generalized insecurity after these past few years, especially the numbers of kidnappings and rapings. The state of Haiti has done practically nothing to honor their commitments to the respect of the physical integrity of a person. And in the report of 80, this report gives data about the deterioration of the security situation with respect to the right to life and security in IT. The voluntary homicides went from 1,141 to two th over 2,000, and then on 2021 to 1,600 and more. With respect to the kidnappings, we went from 68 to 74 and to 664 in 2021. From 2018 to 2022, 19 massacres have been recorded in the Western Department, according to a report of the human rights that enhances in an other report that six massacres have happened in April 20, between April 22 and April 23 on the Western Department with the violent death of 734 people. In March of 2023, the Porto Parole of the United Nations, Madame Martin, has made known that only on the first two weeks of March 2023, the deaths have been at least 208, 164 injured, and most of the victims have been killed or injured by these lost shots that happened regularly. For the first trimester of 2023, there have been 389 cases of kidnapping in Haiti, which increases on 173% with respect to the first trimester of last year. The audio is breaking and interpretation is not possible right now. There's 300 injured and 277 people hurt for the first quarter of 2023. If the rate of kidnapping has been reduced in certain zones of the country during this period of 2023, that is because a wave of uh, international uh, people who have been focused on the country in a region called Boacale. And this means a fury that goes and catches the bandits. And there's these people have been prosecuted without no process whatsoever. In parallel, from 2017 to 2020, 664 deaths. There have been 151 in 2018 and 53 in 2020. There have been deaths within the prisons after the month of June, which means 
that their health and physical integrity is at risk and that malnutrition is a high risk factor in this situation. All of these attacks, the security and physical integrity of a person. And we have a state that does not have an efficient action to guarantee public safety and to protect the life of individuals and to fight impunity. The state has the obligation to prevent and search every case, not only those who are followed by the media. And that is the case of the double murder of two famous pe people. And that is also the case of the assassination of Jamie Defoire in January of 2021. For those crimes, there is no legal uh, prosecution. And General Bacle, he is still with impunity. This is the case um, in 2020, the assassination of the president Jovenel Moïse in 2021, and also the La Saline massacre that I already mentioned. There have been no investigation for these cases. I now give you the floor so that we can continue with the presentation. I give the floor to Jacques Letang. Thank you very much. Good evening. The current crisis has had an impact on access to justice. The fundamental rights guaranteed by various international texts ratified by IT, the International uh, Covenant for Haiti, the Conven Amer American uh, Convention on Human Rights, and the various judicial guarantees and protection is the continually uh, violated by those who have the obligation of enforcing these uh, conventions. The war that we have in the armed gangs, the voluntary homicides, and uh, the various acts of violence have uh, forced the judiciary personnel to limit their displacement and uh, from presenting also these cases to the justice. Various tribunals have been um, displaced because of uh, the violence or are working in improper facilities. It's the case of the Palace of Justice, which was moved after an attack by a gunman who seized the facilities. The deteriorate deterioration of the security wasn't access to justice and uh, there are also there is also the participation of a various uh, characters of the judiciary as a consequence the system is paralyzed uh, in march and from march to june 2021 facilities uh, from the justice system were destroyed and this paralyzed all tribunals and uh, they can no longer deliver the little services they were offering. Because of the situation, we have had seven months of uh, uh, non-activities in all 
tribunals. We had also four months of uh, a strike from 2016 to 2020, according to a survey conducted under exercise of uh, lawyers, tribunals were paralyzed and we had 250 tribunals paralyzed. So this is just uh, uh, to give you an idea of the uh, seriousness of this problem. Access to violence is violated or hindered. Constant strikes and security crises lead to many obstacles in terms of the tribunals functioning and uh, almost no hearings being conducted. For various years, we have had this situation without any kind of assistance, which has had an effect on the preventive detention and arbitrary detention, which uh, have been a very serious problem in our penitentiary system. We have seen that uh, there are also internal factors that hinder access to justice and uh, number of, the number of cases have multiplied due to the humanitarian crisis. In the jurisdiction of all the, all the France, the number of the cases being uh, processed have been reduced to almost nothing. We don't have judges in Jeremy. We have various uh, public servants playing two different roles, either judges or lawyers. And we have many people also in provisionary detention. The beneficiaries of uh, the BDH also have been placed in this situation. And uh, the whole system is in is a chaos. There are acts of uh, corruption being committed by staff of the tribunals. And this, of course, uh, questions and partiality of justice and leads to a lack of uh, balance in some of the sentences or the actions being carried out during hearings and other instances. We have no principles of the good administration of justice. There is no access to judges and uh, no one can expect to be um, putting put forward justice for various crimes that have been studied and uh, no legal assistance is available. Due to the whole situation that I have described, the state which should be respecting human rights have not complied with their obligations. The situation of justice is deteriorated after these uh, uh, years of provisory government, and we wonder if this dysfunctioning of justice has not been wished by some politicians. Mr. Letang, Mr. Letang, you've gone Ms. Mr. Mr. You've gone oui. over your time. I must stop you now. And um, you do have more time later on that you could complete what you have to say. Okay. I now have to invite the state to make their first um, statement to, to us, uh, uh, the delegation of the state. 
you have 20 minutes and you may commence now. Please keep your eye on the clock, which hopefully will be working clearly um, so that you can stop at the right time. Thank you. Delegation of the state, please proceed. Are they here? Yes, the three members of the state are here. Uh, Monsieur Basile, um, Shola Antoine, and Jean Bernard Henri. They are not on, on my screen. Um, but they have no camera. Yes, um, I, Commissioner McCarley, uh, we are Could you please proceed? here. Um, but Ms. Basile is the, the one that. Yes, yeah, Ms. Ms. Basile is the one that's supposed to do the presentation. So uh, yeah. my apologies. Yeah, yeah that Mr. Henri is speaking. He's saying that uh, there have been some technical issues. Second, so I can uh, try to see if we can connect. He's asked for two minutes. Yes, okay. Well, stop the clock, please, because they have not started yet. So, my, my apologies. Mr. Henri apologizes. He's having technical issues, so I, I can only maybe pronounce uh, certain words, even though I'm not the one that was supposed to intervene today if we cannot if we cannot resolve the technical problem then perhaps we would just have to have the reply to the statement in writing which is not the best um, circumstance but is it possible that they'll be able to sort out the technical problem Interpreters, could you assist? The connection is uh, pretty bad, Madam President. Mm. It keeps uh, breaking off all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you hear me? Now I can hear him. Okay. Now I can't hear him. Can you hear me? Me pueden escuchar? It is not possible to listen to him, Margaret. His connection is breaking all the time. Ooh. Problems, problems, problems. Hello, can you hear me? Is, uh, can he write on the chat? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, no, Med Basler is, is, is we can't find him. So I will ask him but to if submit. If he hasn't the... got a prepared statement, perhaps he can. Well, I, yes, I, I will ask him to submit the, the state's please. response and by and writing. Oh, it's not but constant. He, I will ask him, I'll to, ask him to send the state response in writing. Yes, and, and let's see here what he says, because they do have, they, they are here and they are entitled to the opportunity to, to respond.
Does anyone have any bright ideas? I'm not um, IT technically minded. And I'm sure none of our techs are online or present at this moment. Madam Secretary, do you have any ideas? Um, Yes, Madam President, uh, I believe the matter... Sí, señora Presidenta, creo que esto está relacionado con What's la conexión del Estado. Estás hablando en español, yo estaba escuchando <laughs> la interpretación al inglés, perdón. Speak in Spanish, I, I think. Eh, si puedes hablar en español. I believe that the problem is on the side of the estate. I suggest yes, opening the floor to the well, well, commission, yeah. to the commission for their comments. And the estate representative can listen to the commission's comments and then we will give the floor to the civil society. And that is my suggestion to open the and floor the for the commission is, now. And the state must have its, its uh, full opportunity to respond to all the statements. That has to be assured. Absolutely, Madam Commissioner. Hello. Yes, Madam Commissioner. Can they hear you in That can be done in writing. If well, you agree, that's, they... that's, that's what I suggested earlier, but I was hoping that somebody had some other ideas. Um, okay, but it we... seems not. Um, but okay, can, can the state hear you, Hello? Um, any of your interpreters? Madam President, it seems as though the, the state representative the state wanted to speak. But they've been trying to speak, but the interpreters cannot hear them clearly. It breaks up all the time for them, they said. D'accord. Est-ce que là maintenant ça va mieux? Is it better now? Slightly better. Can you interpret them, Paul? Slightly better. Okay. <laughs> because it's up to the interpreters whether they they hear clear enough to interpret they are professionals they don't want to do a bad job can you give us some information in madam president yes uh, i'm trying to speak to the state representative yeah. I'm mm -hmm. asking him if he can listen to me, but he apparently he cannot. And when he speaks, he breaks off most yes. of the time. Yes. Well, can, if we write on the chat, they will, well, I don't even know if they will be able to see that if their power is not. I think we should, well, I'll, I, I will invite the commission uh, to say, um, their bits, and um, then we ask civil society to say what they have to say in reply. And um, then we will have to close and give the, the state the opportunity to send everything they wish to say in writing to us. Are we agreed on that? Yes. I'm asking you uh, of the commission. Yes, so we are okay from the civil society. Question of the country rapporteur. Uh, yeah, if I may, Madam President. Please, I've been asking. Gracias, Presidente. Presidenta, perdón. Quisiera... Interpretation, please. Por parte de no solo la relatoría, sino de todo el pleno y todo el equipo de monitoreo de la comisión. Eh, en materia de cooperación técnica, 
durante Hello. el año 2023 y en concordancia con el plan estratégico 2023-2023. No No, I haven't heard a thing. I'm trying to. Since since um, Commissioner Rallon started speaking, I haven't heard a word. Except oh dear. Can you hear me now? This is a test. One, two, three. No. Okay, this is a test. test. Can you hear me now, Madam President? I, Can I you hear, hear me? The, I hear the test now. Yes, but I heard nothing before. Okay, then. So I will once quickly again, I will uh, summarize what I was saying. What I was saying is that the situation of Haiti situation is highly complex. Is in Haiti is and very it's complex an and issue it's a subject that, that we have been has been worked on with a lot of focus by not the, only uh, teams of our rapporteurship, from but the it's rapporteur. also a very delicate issue for the plenary. I, in IT. Eh, el día de hoy el Estado por problemas de conexión no pudo eh, hacer su presentación y si bien la va a mandar por escrito, indicarles y, y que se pueda llevar el mensaje que estamos sumamente preocupados y estamos con una firme convicción de tener una voz cada vez más potente por parte de la comisión que permita que se puedan articular diferentes eh, mecanismos que permitan ayudar a la situación de Haití. Lo que hoy ocurre desborda las propias capacidades de la comisión, por lo que lo que nos corresponde a nosotros será ser esa voz potente, poder ponernos a disposición de asistencia técnica cuando corresponda, pero sobre todo eh, que esta sensibilidad que nosotros sentimos sea una sensibilidad a distintos órganos, no solo del sistema interamericano, sino una voz eh, para que en el mundo no se normalice lo que está ocurriendo hoy en Haití y que puedan también otros organismos, de acuerdo a sus competencias, colaborar eh, para poder eh, resolver y, y ayudar a que no continúe esta crisis humanitaria que tiene, digamos, eh, un costo social enorme. Así que como relator, eh, indicar que es doloroso, es muy difícil. It's very difficult. And we will do our best to shed light on these situations and achieve some sort of multilateral coordination. And of course, we will do our bit as a commission and we will do uh, everything we can to provide technical assistance. I would like to express my solidarity to the representatives of the civil society who are, are working in the midst of all this adversity, even risking their own lives every day with their work. So I would like to recognize their work and appreciate their being here. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, I now invite uh, Commissioner Joel Hernandez um, to make a statement, intervene. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to greet the civil society organizations here, the representative from the state. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. I think that Commissioner Rallon has already expressed the concern there is at the commission with regards to the human rights situation of Haiti. And in particular, the topic we're here to discuss today, uh, which is the security and the safety of citizens. Now, Commissioner Rallon was talking about our working plan, and we hope to establish a group to provide technical support, uh, or that is my idea at least, because all the efforts by international organizations that have been done through the years, 
I think it's very important that the contribution of the Commission is enough. I know it will be, I, we hope that our effort will go in the right direction so that there's no uh, doubling of, or so that our functions don't become redundant because they are duplicated. We know that the international community is concerned about the situation in Haiti. There have been missions by the UN, by the OAS, who are on the ground right now. The MINU is there, the integrated office of the UN in Haiti, and of course, the office of the High Commissioner of the UN for Human Rights. Now, it would be very helpful for the Commission if you could tell us what you think could be the Commission's contribution in terms of technical assistance, uh, considering this wide array of international organizations that are participating here. We really want to contribute with added value. And that's why we need to know from the civil society and the state, we need to know uh, how to move in the right direction. Thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you very thank you very much, um, Commissioner Hernandez. I call on Commissioner Carlos Bernal to intervene. <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Madam President. Je voudrais me remercier avec les personnes qui ont participé à cette audience. With the people that have participated into this audition, and I would like to say, with respect to the right to life and right to security, it, there is a violation of another right that are guaranteed by the American Convention of Human Rights. And I would like to ask you the information about the possibility of the violation of the right to food and the right to access to water. Because according to my information, the fact that there is a lack of security in IT it is impossible to distribute food and water within the territory. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I now invite our <coughs> executive secretary to intervene, please. Gracias, Presidenta. Muy brevemente agradecer. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to thank the representatives of the civil society for being here for the defense work they do of human rights in such a complex context. And I would like to offer the state our cooperation and our dialogue uh, at the OAS so as to um, we would like if if could uh, answer to this hearing in written form we had a hearing in um, march this year and once again we offer you our availability to visit your country so we can have a dialogue on the ground so that we can overcome not only technical difficulties but only so that uh, but, also, but also so that we can use uh, the physical space to develop trust and communication thank you madam president Thank you. I now invite them. Um, 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 no, <laughs> I now invite the special rapporteur on freedom of expression to intervene. Pedro. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Madam President, for giving me an opportunity. I would like to greet the civil society. I'm really sorry we were unable to listen to the state. First of all, I agree with my colleagues from the commission. And of course, you have the willingness of my rapporteurship. Uh, in particular, with the, we, uh, follow, uh, we follow the, what happens in Haiti and we especially follow lethal violence against journalists. So we would appreciate it if you could share information about this particular topic, either here or maybe later on, so that we can better understand the state of uh, journalism and media in Haiti. I would like to express my solidarity to those in Haiti in these 
moments that are so uh, draining in terms of human rights. And of course, you have our, you can count on us. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. I now invite the Special Rapporteur for Economic, Social, Cultural and Environmental Rights to intervene. Thank you so much, Madam President. Bonjour. Je regrette de, de ne pas parler créole, alors je vais parler en espagnol aussi comme mes collègues. Et voy a sumar. I will also add a question to the ones asked by Commissioner Bernal, because this is a comprehensive crisis in terms of human rights. And we are particularly concerned about the lack of access to water, to food, but also to help, to work. So I would like to know what's daily life like in Haiti. We know Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the region or even the world. And so for the mandate of my rapporteurship, which is in which covers ESEA rights, uh, Haiti is one of the countries that concerns us the most in the region. So I would like to express my solidarity. And I think it's very important to visualize within this crisis, this lack of access to basic rights like water, food, health, or work, because of course that has an impact on the fact that many Haitians are trying to flee their country. So I would appreciate it if you could give us information about that. And of course, please let us know how we can better provide assistance so that you can um, have those rights uh, respected in Haiti. Thank you very much. Um, I want, uh, Paul, I'm, I'm asking you, do you wish to make uh, any comment? Uh, no, no, no um, comments, um, Madam President. Yeah, I, I was hoping that you might, because I know you have been in touch with the embassy, people at the uh, Haitian embassy. Um, I see your hand up, but could I just say, say, say this? First of all, I, I would like to ask the question about the people in prison who have died, um, could you give us further details as to the causes of death, if known, of these persons in prison who are, because whilst well they're in prison, they are in state custody and state care. Um, if you can let us know what were the causes of those deaths. And I do um, I say that I'm, we're very sorry that we could not hear um, directly from the representatives of the state who were there waiting to speak with us. I do see your hand up and I will come to that in a minute. I just wanted for tidiness to finish um, this part of it. And I, as, as has been mentioned, we have been in the commission extremely concerned about um, the crisis in Haiti and what has been happening. And um, we were there up to the beginning of the COVID uh, um, pandemic crisis. We left shortly before, in fact, it's the first place we had our temperatures taken in Haiti. And, Haiti, and we had had a full in local visit, country visits to Haiti, in which we had made plans to have at least one or two officers from the commission stationed in Haiti uh, um, to work there uh, throughout with the Haitian authorities and civil society. All these plans had been in place. And we had lots of meetings with the, the, the assassinated uh, president and who in fact uh, had us for dinner in his home, he and his wife. And we felt extremely shocked uh, at his assassination and, and, and I've really been touched in our souls with what has happened to Haiti because our intent to do all we can had been fixed in, in concrete plans. And we, we can still do that, but certainly nothing can be really done effectively if the security situation is not fixed. And that is, that is clear for all to see. And, 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 and so we would like to hear 
some more, as someone has already said, about the daily life in Haiti with what is happening. Uh, because you, you who know it are the ones who can really speak about it. And we hope to get some more information from you. And as we say, we are ready to assist in all technical manners that we can with all of the mechanisms that we have and including going on a visit um, to Haiti to see if that would assist us to focus and, and identify exactly what we can do with Haiti, the state and civil society. And I now um, invite um, as, um, Monsieur um, Sherry or Antoine from the permanent mission to address us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam President. I would like to bring to your attention the devastating effects of the security in Haiti and the flagrant violation of human rights in Haitian citizens. and the human trafficking. And this illegal traffic has a devastating impact in society and a negative impact in youth and on the most vulnerable populations. We are aware that this also either has been an increase of this illegal traffic within the region and internationally. And this is why the Republic of Haiti is deep in the seriousness of our issues. And this is why sharing these experiences lead us to the protection of individual rights. From our perspective, the Haitian government, there must be a reinforced or strengthened cooperation because our country fights against the illegal trafficking of guns and firearms. And in this context, we believe that the members of the OAS with respect to resolution 647 have to establish arms of small caliber that have been implied on violence act in criminal acts or, or they um, support the violations of human rights in Haiti and they foster the cooperation and the prevention of the traffic and embezzlement of firearms. In this sense, the Republic of Haiti works hard to reinforce its institutions and government entities in the area of government and starts taking care of putting in practice the conventions that have been ratified by IT to fight the illegal traffic of arms and ammunitions. The Republic of Haiti renews its commitment and continues to cooperate actively with the member states to fight this aspect of criminality. The Haitian government has security as the biggest urgent matter in Haiti. And 
the request of the prime minister that in October of 2022 to the uh, secretary of the United Nations and the American states for a specialized international force that has to be in place to apply and put into practice that cooperation. And we need the contribution of the international, only with the contribution of the international community, Haiti will be able to overcome its current problems of human security and set uh, foundations for a more strong, uh, a stronger country. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am not sure if you heard, but we have uh, had proffered to um, the um, a delegation for the states that they could submit to us a full statement in writing. And of course, you could have a recording of what was said uh, um, and for you to be able to fully um, um, make a, 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 a full statement in reply. And so we'll do that. I would now move on to the, um, the right to reply. Um, the civil society, um, I have to check the, the time. Um, civil society, you have 12 minutes. Minutes to reply. Merci beaucoup, Madame la, la Présidente. Je me propose de and commencer. Et puis les autres Thank you very much, Madam President, for giving me the floor. My presentation is going to have three points. The first to reply to the state representative. I would like to say that the state of urgency that we are going through is not, did not start today. It started years ago. If we declare the state of urgency now, I wonder what can we do about to what all the elapsed time where the sole mission of a, this provisionary uh, de facto government that uh, doesn't have any kind of legitimacy, their task was to restore the security conditions to go back to a democratic government. And this was not the case. And uh, we have to say that this government has failed. And uh, this failed is not only due to this failure that the state is in, it's not only the responsibility of the state, but we also need to take into consideration what happened with this provisionary government. This was my first remark. The second one, I wanted to reply to the commissioner who told us about the contribution of the IACHR regarding the situation. I would say that the commission should do its job in Haiti. And if I have understood the mission, it is to um, make, uh, um, to ask for the local authorities to abide by the responsibilities. If uh, they, if the government doesn't abide by the international agreements, the commission should compel the um, government to change its course. The uh, International Bureau, which has a uh, been offering legal um, assistance in Haiti because we can see that in spite of everything, we can uh, look for some intervention of justice in Haiti. And I have to say that I had placed key hopes in on the commission. And when we created the Bureau in 2015, we thought that we were going to use the various uh, instruments of the inter-American system to have a more effective intervention in Haiti. However, unfortunately, this has not been the case so far. I remember the visit of uh, the representative of uh, the court. I remember one of the first mission several years ago where the representatives of the inter-American system told us that uh, we had to resort to them because they should uh, act after our request. And we uh, wrote a letter, we made various uh, 
uh, requests of precautionary measures, and we obtained in 2019 a precautionary measure on the La Saline case. And this is for us a very um, emblematic dispute because uh, it uh, identifies uh, some of uh, the state interventions regarding the massive violation of human rights, the participation of uh, senior representatives of the state that acted for political uh, reasons in order to uh, judge uh, uh, the grassroots uh, um, manifestations. This was some kind of intervention. We obtained these precautionary measures, but ever since, well, we have had uh, various meetings, uh, various work groups, and the state has uh, not uh, uh, abide by they, what they have committed themselves to. And uh, this precautionary measure did not have a, a real impact. It was kind of a symbolic measure, but nothing changed. And the other cases that we have submitted, well, they have not been a follow-up. The, the precautionary measure concerning the deaths of uh, people that have been incarcerated in our country. We have been waiting for months and we have uh, provided some complementary information and we know that the justice is slow, but uh, we want it uh, through our uh, the commission to have access to an organization that will take some action in Haiti. But we are disappointed because uh, we believe that the commission is not close to Haiti uh, because one meeting in Zoom where we don't have uh, electricity with internet that is not working very well. It's interesting. We're happy to see you today, but it's not enough. This doesn't have an actual impact on what we want to, to produce vis-a-vis -vis the local authorities. Ever since your visit in Haiti in 2019, we, we were there, but we were shocked because this visit was just about taking beautiful pictures with uh, Mr. Uh, Moise and all the members of the commission were very happy. They were having a nice time listening to music. This is what we saw. And at that moment, there were already some precautionary measures in the case of the La Saline, and they were not mentioned. And uh, the narrative of Marie's in Haiti was that he was showing by your presence his uh, commitment with human rights, supposed to be speaking. But there were many cases that had not been addressed. So we were very happy to see you. There was an intervention, but the image that we have was not a positive image for the grassroots movements and the civil society organizations. So we're here to remind you, this is our role to remind you of everything that happened. And to go back to some of the um, comments made by the various commissioners, of course, we have a serious problem most of our population have been deprived by food that they are not eating. They have no access to the basic services. We are not even talking about good food. We're going. We are talking about the minimum amount of food to survive. We are. We have also uh, the problems problems uh, associated to the blockade of uh, um, all. Um, road routes because there is no way we can go from one place to another and we have we are in a very complicated situation with a lot of risks we have also problems with water uh, there are whole neighborhoods that have been surrounded by snipers by armed gangs they don't let people to go out and look for food. We have also uh, problems related to uh, the waste, the treatment of a uh, solid waste. And we have also a problem of access uh, that are uh, with respect to uh, the public services. We have a lot of strikes. The institutions are not working. Uh, the, for instance, uh, the services uh, that are in charge of electricity, water, they are not working. And then we don't have electricity. 
as we speak. Uh, we have not had electricity for the last four months. Uh, we have, yes, some solar panels, but they're not working. But if it rains, then we will not have electricity because then the solar panels are not going to work because our, our single energy source is the sun. And uh, people have not access to water. They don't have access to electricity, no access to healthcare. People cannot uh, go to hospitals because they are closed because uh, there is lack of uh, fuel also. And um, we didn't have any kind of gasoline in our country for months and hospitals were closed because of this. And also the kidnapping, massive kidnappings of doctors. There is a doctor that was kidnapped just yesterday. And uh, someone said that even in the best schools, uh, in the framework of the Biden program, they quit their work. They don't want to work anymore. So there are also problems with schools. Uh, the roads are blocked. There are a lot of kidnappings of school, uh, I mean, children that are being kidnapped. Even inside, from inside, there is schools because the kidnappers came to the schools and say, if you don't pay me, I am going to take all these children later. And well, it is a totally catastrophic situation. I'm going to give the uh, forward to um, my colleague here, Jacques Letton. Yes, I would like to say that the situation of many of the people being incarcerated in Haiti is also a catastrophe. It is a calamitous situation because the state cannot uh, fulfill its mission, which is to provide good food for people who have been incarcerated. Just recently, we visited a penitentiary in the southern part of our country, and we could see that inmates were overcrowding. The situation was uh, uh, calamitous, as I said, they have no access to food, and um, they have to receive food from people outside prison that have to go to the penitentiaries to bring them food. So they are under a very, very precarious situation. And um, it's the same in port prince it's the same thing at Jacques Mel, it's the same all over the country. And we have to add to all this, the lack of responsibility of uh, local authorities that do not to visit the penitentiaries to just make sure if the inmates have been properly taken care of or properly fed. And um, this should be their obligation to make sure that the, these institutions are, uh, are functioning well, but they don't do this. And uh, when we ask them to explain what the situation is to the Ministry of Justice, well, the ministry is not asking them any kind of explanation. And uh, of course, they cannot even uh, enforce procedures to respect the due process. So we see that there are very irregular situations in these penitentiaries. Someone talked about a, a food. And uh, I would say that uh, the citizens that, you know, uh, our citizens cannot have access to food because we are facing numerous problems. Financial resources are not well distributed. And it's difficult right now. But I say, I don't say that Haiti is a poor country. I say that resources are ill distributed. And of course, in terms of uh, the preventive uh, detentions, we see that these uh, 
detentions have increased in number. It's like a cancer now. So I believe that the commission is not really overseeing the situation. It's not uh, addressing the situation properly in terms of what is happening in Haiti. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, I will, I, I, I'm going to check again whether the state are still in the same position. The state representatives were here earlier. Um, if they can speak now and that the interpreters can hear them. If not, we will proceed with the decision we had taken that there. We are prepared to have their um, full statements and re in reply and submission and so on in writing um, from them. And I'm, I'm sure the executive secretary will ensure that they have a, a copy of all that has been said before. Um, um, I, and, and, and now I am, on, as was predicated, I'm supposed to close the meeting, but I want to invite my colleagues if they wish to make a very short last comment. If any of you wish to make any short last comment. No? Thank you. Uh, Maria, you wish to say something? Maria, yes, please do that. Please speak. This is uh, the Deputy um, Executive Secretary for Monitoring. I saw your hand up. Thank you, Madam President. I wanted to thank the civil society organizations for all the information you have provided. We will follow up the human rights situation in Haiti. This has been included in Chapter 4A of the annual report of the Commission. In particular, I would like to highlight that the Commission has uh, approved and published the report on the human rights situation in Haiti after the visit that was made before the pandemic. And based on that report last year, we have been trying to move forward regarding technical cooperation with the state. And I would like to highlight that the Commission has issued a resolution on the situation of um, persons from Haiti on a situation of human mobility, calling on persons to uh, be to share responsibility and solidarity and all this information is very useful and we will use it in all the reports the commission is working on. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, I see um, Commissioner Howell's hand up and um, Mr. Monsieur Antoine, I will call on you after Commissioner Howell has spoken. I would like to thank Carpentier for su intervención for tan Pero that sobre statement todo, that was so passionate, sobre todo tan especially yo so he honest nota and candid. I have taken down notes de sus of her vision, her expectations por el de la regarding the work of the commission. And pues I'm sure no. my colleagues have taken down notes. The commission has limitations and scopes and its mandate is determined by international law. We are part of a big chain. You can count on the fact that we will do our part and the work we do will be useful for the civil society to support you on your struggle. Thank you. Um, yes, um, uh, Senor Antoine. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Muchas gracias. I would like to simply, on behalf of the Haitian government, say that we have the will to improve. And this is why we are searching for the means. 
to improve our capacity and the security in Haiti and the FADH. And this is why it is important for our government that a council of this commission engages and to constitute, to help us constitute a national government. And according to the propositions DH, and we, it is urgent to solve these issues. And it is for this reason that the government wants to have the assistance of the CIDH and the international community to have a specialized international force to accompany the government on the field to mon monitor and guarantee the situation of human rights in Haiti. Um, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. I, 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 I'm going to ask you to, to after I say a few words, to stay with your cameras open so that we can take a photograph of this, and then we will close the hearing. But I just wanted to say, make this comment, and I think as president, it behoves me to say so. I, I do agree with my brother Howell that. Uh, um, Ms. Uh, Mademoiselle or Madame Pauline Le Carpenter, um, your intervention was extremely interesting in parts, but also incorrect in parts. <clears throat> the commission has no power to compel anyone. We make recommendations and recommendations do not have any compelling character. Uh, the court, the directions on the other hand is a different matter because the they, they states uh, um, ratify and accept the jurisdiction of the court, which then imposes on the state the duty to obey the orders of the court. We don't make orders, we make recommendations only. We do try to monitor our recommendations if they are made pursuant to a petition case, then the state's failure to implement our recommendations in the case will then force us, as the convention requires, to send the matter to the court. That is when some compelling can happen, but that is all. And, and I don't know what photographs you referred to because we had a many, many meetings with civil society in Haiti when we were there many meetings, long meetings with civil society, various civil society groups. And we tried and understood their positions that is stated to us. And the reports following the visits indicated that. We do the best that we can with the little power that we have to make recommendations. And believe me, when I say this, you may doubt it as much as you wish, but believe me when I say this, the commission is invested in Haiti's interest and future. And we will continue to work and do the best that we can with the tools that we have. And we have made an offer for, of technical assistance. It is for you to record, tell us what technical assistance you wish from us. And all the state agents can tell us what technical assistance they wish to have. And we will do our best to provide these. I thank all of you for being here and please stay on camera so that uh, the photographer can take a picture for our records. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for remembering. I'll just wait you take off your mask. And now if everybody can look at your camera. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Merci.
civil society, thank you for being here, the state representatives for being here, and from uh, um, the permanent Over. mission, thank you um, for being here. Thank you. Over. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you so much.